correct selenium is a little proof. But what I would like to uh, remark that if we remove this block variable, then the statement became false. Because for normal integral three manifolds, this variable is not proof. Certainly everybody knows this. And the reason for this is the following that uh, uh, in, if the manifold is non orientable, then, uh, then certainly it admits again prime decomposition, but the factors are unique only up to, up to replacing the direct product of S1 and S2 with the steel product of S1 and S2. It's a well known fact. So, for the next. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a <laughs> <laughs> I tried to anima make animation and I uh, forget to remove it. Okay. Next example is also a very novel example uh, of prime decomposition theorem. The sugar prime decomposition theorem, which states that any knot in three dimensional sphere can be uh, decomposed and connect the sum of prime factors. And the proof of the first statement is approached actually again the Knezer lemma. All that we should do, we should apply Knezer lemma, but we should, we should take care that the knot in question should be uh, composed of ages, of ages of, of the angulation. And no other obstacles. Uh, and the second is that in the prime knots, the factors are unique up to the rotation. It's uh, also not very really difficult, but now uh, I think that uh, uh, maybe for some of us this statement will be new. Uh, what I mean when I say global knot? So global knot, by, by definition, it is a knot in arbitrary three-dimensional So the on the sum or quite well, the prime decomposition of such knots can be exactly the same, can be defined exactly in the same way as for a classical case. So if we have a manifold and a knot inside it, maybe, maybe I don't know a picture. So we have some manifold. If we have some knot inside it, then another manifold, another knot, then I remove a small ball which crosses our knot along a trivial R and two spheres are the same. And then I identify those two spheres such that the endpoints they match. And what we get, we get a connection sum. And the inverse operation, so we get a connector sum. And the inverse operation will just be cut along the sphere and fill the ball. So it is actually the same definition as for classical case, but it is not a sphere, but a bit remaining. Uh, so uh, the first surprise here is, uh, in general, uh, there exist nodes which admit no prime decomposition. Uh, is this only for non-orientable three manifolds? No, no, this is for all manifolds. But is it possible that in an orientable three manifold there is a two sphere that crosses a lot at one point? Certainly, that's two crosses one, please. Ah, okay. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so uh, again, when I prepare to this talk, I thought that this is actually a very easy argument to show that uh, in general prime decomposition doesn't exist. But uh, uh, really it's uh, not very easy. It requires some knowledge of algebra, some uh, theorems from algebra. So I will not prove this. I will not construct, uh, I will exp uh, explain that uh, in general prime, uh, there is no decomposition by an argument which, uh, let me show this, uh, this argument. So, 
Certainly, you are right. Suppose we well, have a node K, and suppose we have a manifold, and we have a sphere, two dimensional sphere inside our manifold, such that this node uh, crosses the sphere at exactly one point. It means, in fact, in particular, it means that this sphere is not, uh, is not uh, separated. Okay, then what we can do? Uh, let us take some, uh, some crossing point of this node, whatever it is, not the sphere, but nevertheless. Then I do the following. I carry this lowest strand by isotopy to this position, to some to sphere, to the other side. Okay, I get from behind this R, and then I rotate this R all along the sphere, and what I get, I get that now, it, 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 from, the, uh, from the position which is on the other side of the sphere, it will be here, on this side of the sphere. And then we remove, uh, or isot make isotopy, for this place again. It was the result before we had we had uh, let's say this process and afterwards we, we get this process. So it's possible to achieve the crossing change by isotopy. Using this sphere, one portion, one half of this, we can go this way and we go on this way because we already know about. But then you certainly understand that in this way, if we allow my exercise crossing, we can do everything. We can type, we can type, type uh, construct here a lot by isotopy. Then we can apply spherical reduction and we get uh, this factor. The spherical reduction, we cut all this, we obtain here our lot, and here we will disappear. Uh, but then we again try a lot and again and so on and this process is can continue and continue. So no no prime condition. So uh if there is such a sphere, then all the knots are equivalent, all are trivial, yes? No, all, all the knots which are uh, across uh, the sphere in one point. Uh, no, no. Uh, so uh, a knot uh, a type is defined only by uh, an element of the fundamental group, no. yes? No, 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 no. This tree is true only for knots which cross the sphere in one point. Yes. Yes, that's yeah, what but I say. No, not, not, not all knots are cross our sphere in one point. If you take a knot uh, far from the sphere, for example, ah, okay, you, okay. Know, it, you can do with it with nothing. Uh -huh. ah, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this red statement uh, just answer your question. No, uh, 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 If there is no such spheres, for our knot, for fixed knot, if we have a knot in the K, which uh, doesn't cross uh, any, any sphere at one point, then the prime decomposition exists, and again here, the measure lemma actually holds that for proofs are enough. Okay. No, and it's also unique. Uh, this one. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, suppose that the, the, that the prime decomposition does exist. And the question is, is this decomposition unique or not? Okay, and in general, the answer is negative. I put it as a old result of uh, Akula Maezaki, who published in Transaction of American Mathematical Society in 1989. So this is a bad news, but the good news we're talking to examples. Admit, uh, in a sense, a unique uh, uh, description. So the reason is just, in all cases, the same. By the way, this phenomenon that when we have uh, when this 
around the question of the that is not true. Uh, it is in all cases, which I know, in all cases, the reason why the pseudonym is not true, it is actually unique. So, one obstacle, not several obstacles. Yeah, so, uh, what is R? Right, so, the main ingredient for constructing for examples is this word R. Actually, what we did it is just we take two copies of solid tones, yellow, yellow circle with meridian, and this yellow circle with also meridian discs. And I said, uh, take a very simple note, just go twice around the uh, longitude. And uh, if we, I take those two. So it works and we do them together such that the boundaries of these disks do match. I do together, I get the S2 process 1. And S2 process 1 and a node, which is R inside X. This is just what I called this. This R is just uh, and this not obtained in this name. Okay. So what is uh, uh, interesting here that if a, prime, if a prime decomposition of a lot in a three-dimensional manifold contains no, uh, so and, uh, among the factors, this R, so we have no, so contains no R, no such loss. So, uh, so K is decomposed to two prime factors, and I say. Uh, the Manzanus factors is no R. Then, this is a unique prime decomposition. So, uh, all, only R is unique. But, if the one prime factors of K, there exists this not R, then, then what is important, uh, then in general, we get a point of example, but what's important, that you see, for R, maybe I should work this, So R for this node, there is isotopy of a meridian. You see this red circle. Those red circles are meridians. There is isotopy which uh, is outside the node, but it reverses the orientation of our meridian. You can carry this meridian in three-dimensional manifold and return to the same place, but the orientation will be opposite. But we never uh, touch our node. So how to see this? You see, they are very similar to pictures, yellow, 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 half. But here, I mean a disk, exactly this disk. Uh, But here, I get an annulus. What type of annulus? I, if we take a union of this disk, uh, uh, these two poles, with this disk, I get a sphere, these two poles, but it is an annulus. So, if you see those meridians, of this one and this one, they, one of them can be isotopic to the other, and the orientation are different. This is the main property of this R. We can move it around the manifold and it will go to the same place with the opposite orientation. And here you construct, not construct, I describe how one can construct a quantum example for prime decomposition theory in this case for global loss. Uh, you see, let's take a ball, gray ball, and a knotted R inside it. Then this blue uh, circles, they actually are, uh, they take two meridians and take regular neighborhoods of these meridians. And I remove them. So I get a ball with a node and with two toroid poles. Okay. 
this is an F picture here. What is here? I take some manifold X, which has two boundary components. And the boundary components are all right. And then I fill this force by this manifold by taking uh, by some polymorphism, which take this torus to this torus and this boundary torus to this boundary torus. I get some manifold of this together with some manifold. It is not close, but it doesn't matter. We can uh, easily to add something more to, to, to get a closed manifold. Uh, this is K1. And what is K2? You see the difference. And the difference is only that this uh, black arrow became red arrow. What does it mean? That it means that here I take the same uh, I take the same polymorphism, but uh, in this case, for example, some fixed P of alpha is marked for longitude to meridian, meridian to, to this meridian uh, uh, with some orientation. But here I actually change the orientation. This curve, the same curve, my is marked to again to this meridian by the opposite orientation. So. If we attach, I get K2, and K1 and K2 certainly easy to construct examples when they are different. But what are K1 and K2? This is just, uh, uh, you know, it is a portion of this, and then we add the ball, uh, it goes into the node. So, so K1 is already the connected sum of what is on the left hand. K1 is already the result of pasting. Say again? So K1 is already the result of pasting uh, of uh, what is on the left hand X. No, no. Uh, what, what I want to say, we take a wall, attach X, get some manifold. The boundary of this manifold is a sphere. And then I attach a wall. So the answer is yes. What? Well, yes, so K1 and K2 are different. But what are they? Any arbitrary two knots or what? So K1 is the result of a is obtained from K an arbitrary two knots. K1 and K2 are two such knots which were described before, which have the property that if you add R to them, you get the same thing. Ah, yeah. okay. So those arcs in the three ball are the same. Yeah. But the, the knots are different because of the different way of gluing X yeah, exactly, to that ball. Exactly, exactly. Okay, good. Actually, you know, you might uh, change the orientation of meridian, uh, for example. But actually, the three manifolds are different. Yes, the three manifolds are the same. Let me show the picture. But if you change the orientation uh, in one place, uh, on the X. I you know, in one case we have uh, this meridian, in other cases this meridian. And certainly you may rotate this meridian and the not will be done in this way. Uh, uh, so we get, we get, we change this meridian by uh, kind of uh, AC rotation. But when we do this, convert this to this one, we, the not will be run differently. So the but the one. manifold is the same. The manifold is the same because of this trick. Ah. If you forget the node, then, uh, then you ah. can easily change the meridian, uh, orientation of meridian by rotation. Yeah. By ah. But the node becomes different. Okay. Yeah, but uh, now uh, this discussion helps me. Oh, okay. This discussion helps me to uh, make it easy to explain why those, this equality that holds. Because if it add R, then we can reverse the orientation of meridian by isotopy. Mm -hmm. So both the laws are the same. Okay. Let's go further. Now I switch myself to a completely different subject. No, not completely. I will consider knots in direct products of surfaces and interval, and thickened surfaces. Uh, 
uh, so some explanation why this is interesting. This is because uh, if you will give lectures, introductory lectures to three dimensional topology, you give an example that the ball is a three dimensional value for the sphere, three dimensional value for the but next. The nature next example of three dimensional manifold is take a surface and multiply by simple by the law. Okay, so uh, second argument why it is interesting is because uh, actually uh, knots in symphony surfaces and classical knots have uh, much uh, many common common uh, features uh, because because they are presented just by the same diagram. In order to represent a knot in sequence surfaces, it's sufficient to draw a curve on this surface and at each point, cross your point, we should uh, uh, indicate which strand is going uh, over the other in usual way by uh, as here. And actually the third third reason that uh, for knots in sequence surfaces dominate virtual knots, it's actually according to one of possible definitions of virtual knots, uh, virtual knots, or one of the things, is an equivalence class of knots in sequence surfaces. In fact, equivalence class up to stabilization and destabilization. So, how to define connected sum of such knots? The current definition of connected sum is actually the same as for a classical case. If our surfaces we are considering if we restrict two spheres, then we get a usual not simply nothing to do. So first step, if you have two knots, I remove two discs, then I glue them together and I get a new knot in a new in a sequence surfaces which is obtained by connecting some of those knots. So we have operation. We can connect the summation. And inverse operation is a, yeah, it is important. Inverse operation is not a spherical reduction. It is an angular reduction. I'm sorry, is the direct operation correct or defined? It is a central connection, it's more logical defined. It depends not only on connectation, it depends on composition, on possession of uh, this, uh, this sequence. So it's, uh, so it's not well defined. It is multiple defined. They don't yes. I, I object that there is not well defined. It's defined. It's even multiply defined. <laughs> yeah. Which is better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we uh, should say about angular reduction. Why? Because when we make, uh, again, draw a picture. It is if if you consider instead of uh, let's say Dorai as uh, shown here as spheres, you get the usual connected sum. Okay, so what is the spherical reduction? Uh, here, here. So what actually happens to get from this picture to this picture, we should uh, cut along the circle and then attach to this. But let's, uh, I recall you that we are here, our manifold is not a surface, it is a direct surface uh, uh, product is interval, the same surface. So actually here we have not only curve, we have uh, an angle. So it's called angular reduction. But I forget about this. I will work on this circle so because it's much easier. Okay, so we have this connected sum operation. And the question is, again, uh, the same question actually. Does any not have a prime decomposition? And the answer is yes. Here we do not need uh, neither level or something. It is actually almost evident because when we 
uh, perform such reduction from here to here, mm -hmm. the genus of the surface will just uh, behave correctly. So here we get genus uh, became smaller for this. So by genus, uh, by, by taking the common genus, we can be sure that this process of consequences in the uh, mm -hmm. annual reduction has stopped. The only exception is that uh, when we, like here, we have a lot, and we also can uh, cut it off and get an additional uh, factor. But in this case, when we cut along the sphere, we just uh, uh, go into the subject of uh, uh, sugar theorem, the number of spherical of local knots is finite. So it doesn't so the statement that uh, that this answer yes is easier. And the question is, so is this decomposition unique or not? And the answer is yes and no. In what sense? So this is the main theory. So it turns out that if our knot is homologically trivial, which means that it determines uh, zero, in the uh, first homology group is sufficient to consider Z2 coefficients. Then the answer is yes, the deposit decomposition is unique. In general, if our node is not homologically trivial, the answer is negative. The next point of example. And here is actually, you see here, a counter example. But certainly I will draw this step by step on the paper on the blackboard to, to, to be clear what actually is the what it is So here. And then I go from y 
in y, but here I make also some other node, which I uh, denote by z. And then I uh, turn to x and I'll go here. Let's make the node this node by k, k1. Here I get the node k2. They actually form separately here. Oh, this, this, this notation is not too much. Okay, but we get here k1, k2, then I go here, and then I return this place again, go around to make a very difficult, uh, complicated limb, and then I return to white. So my claim that this not admits two different prime compositions, assuming that this k1 and k2 are different. So I can uh, so, how to do this? Uh, let us perform the first analog reduction. And uh, for this, first I say, I take this curve. If I cut our surface along this curve, I get, I get actually a disk, okay, with the black handle, and here I get a one, and this is a, this knot is separated. This is this this is yours. This total is separated. I get this picture. And also, I get our uh, 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 remaining portion, our sphere, with the hole, which remained after the removing this. And also, this uh, handle is remained. This is the K2. <coughs> so, as you remember, the, uh, the decomposition consists in two steps. First, the cut, then attach disks. So, when we attach a disk here, uh, okay, sorry, I forget about this portion. Yeah, we have Z. Okay. When I attach a disk here, I get a solid, I get a torus, which is exactly one of those pictures that we show. Uh, this one, we get not, uh, not exit, sorry, this is K1 and Z. I get a solid torus with the, this is a prime factor, here we have a node K1 and here we have Z. And the remaining part, if we attach a bone here, I get a solid torus uh, with only K2 here. And some, uh, the remaining part, okay, also here I get something. What I am saying, that because K1 and K2 are different, we get different parameter conditions. So, when we cut a lot, um, when we use one procedure, we get those circles, and then when we start from the other, we get those circles. So, that's so is it obvious that these are, are primes and that you cannot decompose further? It is obvious because the, uh, uh, the underlying surface is a torus, and the torus contains no non trivial. Uh, uh, no, no trivial separating curves. Also, you should okay. that there are no, no spheres, no classical parts. Uh, that there are no local parts. Yeah, yeah, I still that no local, no, 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 no local some nodes, yeah. Okay, so, uh, maybe I have not enough, enough time to, I plan to say some, uh, some steps of the proof. Yeah, let me just try say a few words about about proof. So the strategy is the following. That, uh, suppose that there is a counterexample. Then the counterexample means a knot not which have two different prime decompositions. Then, 
Uh, I may assume that this knot uh, is uh, in a sense good in, a, in the following sense that all knots which are obtained by 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 uh, the annular rejection they are already are not counterexamples. Each of them have, have only one apparent disposition because if some after some uh, and the reduction we, we have a counterexample, then we forget about the first one and continue to work with the second one. Okay. And then try to decrease complexity, decrease the complexity. Uh, what is the complexity? I don't know. All, very all reduction is just um, performed by cutting along annuli. One reduction we have along one annulus and another. And I measure the complexity by uh, number of uh, uh, intersection curves. We have two annuli, which give us different results, different kinds of deposition. I measure the complexity by the number of curves in the intersection. And at the end, very end, I skip some details. We came to conclusion, to conclusion, which actually the same conclusion is actually is, um, made, is uh, true for orbitals. From the premise, I think uh, that the more time, the claim is the following, that if there is a counterexample, that is not, uh, not in a second surface which has two prime, different prime decomposition, then there exists a counterexample such that this, those two ways, two different prior positions, so they are performed along curves, so the curves intersect only in four points. The complexity, one can, um, it is possible to decrease the complexity of counterexample to the space when two spheres, two uh, stop on side intersecting in two, four points, just as by our, by our example. And then this can be uh, checked by hand that in this case we have actually two counterexamples. The one which I show here, and the second it was uh, uh, constructed with the help of uh, uh, Philippe Koragov. There is another the second counterexample. And uh, why I claim that uh, for before the situation is just the same. We assume that our of the fourth has three different prime decomposition, and then we simplify this uh, quantum example as long as possible, and we come to conclusion that it, uh, we get the exist quantum example when those two spheres are intersecting in the four photos. And then by hand we can construct quantum example. Okay, so I finish by, by showing uh, these are some steps of the proof. This is a counterexample for all defaults. You see here uh, two. So uh, the all default is actually a dimensional manifold with a graph inside it. And uh, the graph is equipped with some integer, integer numbers which uh, are subjected to some condition. So you see this all defaults, and you see here two spheres. One sphere is this one. And that is another this here. And if we start to uh, decompose it into connector sum, you get two different prime decompositions because of this additional additional uh, uh, decoration. But of course, I was very proud when I constructed this example. I gave talk on different conference, but quite recently I realized a very simple thing. Uh, but not only me try to investigate this problem, some other mathematicians have to say, people they try to prove this. But I came to uh, discover it quite unexpectedly that already in 90, uh, even 80, uh, 91, this counter example was Miyazaki when he constructed a knot which uh, admits two different prime decomposition. It is already a counterexample to prime decomposition theorem for all the faults because if you equip this knot by number two, so we allow branching of order two, we get an all default which admits two different prime 
decarbonization. So it's an interesting fact, more than 10 years, people used the theorem, which is, is elite, in evident manner is not correct, it's false. Okay. Thank you. 